Right, so uh, this uh, presentation actually uh, takes into account the uh, simulations that Constantine already uh, described, so uh, this will save me some time uh, for um, uh, my presentations. And uh, what I'm going to present you is actually C plus synthetic observations of these dwarf galaxy mergers, because these dwarf galaxy mergers have a lot of uh, star form, uh, the, the star formation rates, as you saw in these uh, 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 simulations, uh, span like three plus orders of magnitude. So it's quite good to see how the star formation rate correlates this with uh, C plus emission and so on. But before that, uh, let's do some uh, basic introduction. So uh, the actual uh, star formation rate, as I said, is of fundamental importance for understanding the uh, cyclic process of uh, the global star formation in galaxies across the epochs. Um, measuring it can uh, reveal the properties and the evolutionary stages of the observed ISM. And here on the top right uh, figure, as you see, uh, you see here how the star formation rate density correlates with uh, redshift. And you see here that here is the present day universe. And we have a, at redshift of, of around two, which is uh, actually around uh, uh, um, three uh, giga years after Big Bang, you see that uh, the star formation rate density peaks. So this is where we have the galaxy assembly epoch and uh, where we have all this cosmic starburst. Now, um, on the other uh, hand, uh, we have ALMA, which uh, is um, quite good to observe uh, C plus at 158 microns across uh, the high redshift universe, which is here the blue line. You see how the uh, C plus line um, goes around the ALMA bands. And so you see that as we go back in uh, redshift, we go to lower and lower bands. Now, what is significant with C plus? Uh, C plus is actually one of the most uh, brightest lines that uh, originate from uh, star forming galaxies. It has an ionization potential slightly uh, higher than, uh, slightly lower than the ionization potential of uh, hydrogen, which is now uh, 11.3. It is a very important uh, um, PDR coolant, and it has an upper state energy of uh, 91 Kelvin, approximately 91 Kelvin. So this is a very good uh, um, emission line, uh, which we can take into account in order to do some uh, science on the ISM, especially at high redshift universe. Now, talking about the um, Griffin uh, simulation, as uh, Constantine also mentioned, uh, this is an SPH simulation. Uh, we have a chemical network of 12 elements, it's six species, a basic chemical network. Um, the important thing is that we go down to, uh, uh, to resolution. The resolution here is quite high. It's like we, we go down to four solar masses per SPH particle, which is significant for galaxy scale simulations. The important thing here uh, with this simulation is that as uh, we have two galaxies, dwarf galaxies that follow this parabolic orbit, we have the first um, uh, approach where we have the first encounter. Uh, then we have the second encounter, which we have a starburst activity and we have massive star cluster formation. And uh, these produce nice H2 regions, which expands and uh, disperse uh, the, and unbinds actually the dense cloud. So if we want to see this in action, uh, here we have this uh, two uh, galaxies. We have this bar-like structure in the first encounter. Now it's the second encounter. We have a burst of uh, uh, massive star cluster formation and also H2 regions, then the two centers of these two galaxies settle. And I, then we have a, a smaller um, a starburst activity which uh, disperses and unbinds the higher uh, density gas. Uh, the region of interest uh, for my presentation is actually whatever is inside the blue uh, circle, the blue sphere, if we are in 3D, of course, um, which we will analyze. Now here we have three different snapshots at 70 mega years, 160 and 170, which is the uh, two snapshots from the second and main encounter, and one later on. So the upper panel here shows the column density plots. You see here the um, positions of the three most important clusters. There are more uh, star formation activity going on, but these are the most important massive clusters that produce this uh, H2 regions. If we do the C plus emission here, which we have done with random C3D, uh, we get this picture here, uh, we have C plus uh, emission coming mostly from the place where we have the formation of this massive uh, cluster formation. And uh, underneath we have the far infrared emission. So what's actually uh, what actually dust emits. And so we see some correlation here, as we expect, of course, uh, with a C plus uh, emission, which we'll analyze also later on. 
Um, as Constantine also showed you, uh, we have here the star formation rate versus the time uh, of the simulation. We have three peaks, which correspond to the first two correspond to the actual uh, uh, encounters, the, the, the uh, two epochs of uh, collision. And we have a third one, which is when the two centers of these galaxies merge and we have a slightly higher star formation activity there leading to this uh, uh, increase. Underneath, what you see here is the C plus luminosity of the entire system versus time. The solid lines are actually not one or two, but four different lines. We have three, uh, which is the uh, C plus emission as we observe it from three different uh, angles, viewing angles. And uh, a red one is the optically thin limit. And the take home message from this uh, uh, panel here is that actually the optically thin limit of C plus emission holds extremely well in these uh, simulations. And uh, the smaller, the, the, the thinner solid line is actually coming from the relationship that uh, Ilse Deleuze uh, 2014 um, uh, provided uh, through these uh, dwarf galaxy survey uh, observations, uh, where, she, where they correlated the star formation rate with the observed C plus emission. And taking uh, the equation into account, if we just plug it in, plug in the star formation rate from the simulation, the equation predicts this uh, thin solid uh, line, which is very, very good in agreement, in excellent, not excellent, but in extremely good agreement with our uh, simulations. One of the important questions that we have in C plus uh, uh, emission is where does this emission come from? So uh, long story short, we have divided the uh, ISM in different components. We have the molecular phase, which is down here. The molecular is the, the dense medium, uh, which as we see here, we have actually negligible contribution throughout the simulation. Then we have the core neutron medium, the warm neutron medium, which is the orange and the red line. And then we have the ionized gas. Now, when I say ionized, just ionized, I mean whatever is below um, above 10,000 uh, 10, Kelvin. That includes photoionization and collision ionization. And if we want to isolate the contribution of the H2 regions, which is the, coming from photoionization, uh, this is actually the uh, thin solid line. And uh, what you see here is that throughout the simulation, uh, around 60% on average, the C plus emission in these simulations come from the warm neutral, warm neutral medium. And you see some peaks uh, at the second encounter and later on which uh, the H2 regions overtake the emission of the entire system. And so there was a recent paper by um, uh, Langer, 2021, uh, who found that dense H2 regions in Milky Way can contribute up to 50 or even more than 50% to the emission that we see. So this is in agreement. These spikes are in agreement with some recent uh, observations. Now, what about the C plus emission and the far infrared uh, uh, emission? This is the famous the C plus deficit uh, problem. So uh, C plus deficit in, in few words is like, uh, is that the, uh, the, the, the uh, galaxy that we see, the object we see is bright in far infrared uh, luminosity, but not bright enough in C plus, not as, uh, as, as at least we expect. And uh, if we correlate here our simulations, with observations, and this is a solid, uh, the solid line here is a theoretical approach uh, by Munoz and O. Um, we figure out, uh, what, what we see is that the, the trends that we also find in galaxies, that we observe in galaxies are there, uh, of course, because we, we are looking at smaller scale objects like the dwarf galaxy, not big galaxies. Uh, we expect to have this, sh uh, this shift to the, to the left, as we have in this uh, diagram, but the slope is what matters, and this slope is uh, in agreement with observations. And um, what we find is that the C plus deficit comes actually from uh, thermal saturation of C plus. And what is the thermal saturation? Uh, the dust is, is proportional, the, the, the cooling of the dust uh, is uh, proportional to the sixth power of the dust uh, temperature, the sixth power. The uh, dust temperature is also proportional to the G0, which is the FUV intensity, to the 0.2. Therefore, the uh, emission is super linear correlated with G0, or just linear, if, uh, if this is easier to remember. And uh, so this means that as long as we increase in G0, we will also have more and more 
fine infrared emission. But we don't actually have the same thing with uh, the um, fine infrared with the C plus emission. Actually, this is another uh, correlation here that we have the uh, C plus over FIR, which is the deficit, versus the surface star formation rate. And we also see the trends uh, when you compare this uh, with observations. Um, but uh, we want to actually test and see where, why this thermal saturation uh, creates this uh, uh, C plus deficit. And to do that, we will move away from these uh, 3D simulations and we will go to simplified but more chemically informed PDR simulations. And to do that, we have used the 3D PDR code, which we compiled as in 1D, it's just the name, it's a, uh, that, that we can actually do 3D models, but uh, these uh, models that I will show, these are all 1D. And we wanted to imitate the um, um, conditions that we have this, in this dwarf galaxy uh, simulation. So we, we got a density of 300 particles per cubic centimeter. The cosmic ray energization rate was very low and the metallicity subsolar is like 10% of the solar. So this imitates quite well the uh, dwarf galaxy um, uh, simulation, the, the ISM there. And then we played with uh, the G0 value. It went from very low to crazy high. So from one to a million. And we want to see now how C plus emission and, and fire infrared emission behave. So on the left, you see, top left, you see the C plus uh, emissivity, top right, the gas temperature, Bottom left, the fire infrared, so what comes out from dust. And on the right, the right hand side is the important C plus over FIR ratio versus the surface uh, fire infrared luminosity. So this simulation uh, is actually for G01, so low FUV intensity. And now I increase the uh, G0, so go on and on and on. And what you see here is that the actual C plus. Uh, cannot emit more. As long as I increase from 1 to 10 to the 6 um, G0, we don't have uh, a, a strong uh, difference in the C plus emission. Although the gas temperature goes from 100 to more than 1000 Kelvin, but here in the fine infrared emissivity, we have this super linear um, uh, behavior as, uh, as, uh, as we discussed. And of course, the C plus over FIR decreases, so we go to the C plus deficit medium. So we have the C plus thermal saturation. Remember here that we have the dust emission that is proportional to the G0 to the 1.2. And uh, this is actually a close up of the C plus thermal saturation, which means that the nominator of the C plus over FIR uh, ratio stays approximately the same. The denominator increases and therefore the ratio drops. That's how the C, the C plus deficit originates. If you want to see that in a 2D, uh, uh, map. So on the left, we have the C plus emission. The dot here is the cluster three, which is the, the, the cluster that is responsible for this uh, bright C plus emission. We have the same figure in the FIR emission. And if we divide these two maps, we, we do a map uh, division here, we end up having this uh, image. So what do we see here? This dashed line corresponds to a 0.1 kiloparsec distance from the cluster three. So one, two, and three kiloparsing and, and so on. And you, what you see here is that as we move closer to the cluster three, the C plus over FIR ratio drops, uh, which two we minutes. go to, thank Come you. Uh, thank you, that, uh, that we go to uh, C plus uh, deficit. Now, if we uh, study here the dust temperature, you see that there is, uh, with respect to the center of the cluster three, we see that close to cluster three, the dust temperature is very high. Remember also that the dust emission uh, 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 relates to the sixth power of dust uh, temperature. Then we have the gas temperature, which is always higher and much higher than 91 Kelvin. And uh, this actually creates this uh, C plus deficit medium. If we want to compare this with recent and earlier observations of the Orion uh, Nebula, we find the same picture. We have the C plus FIR, and if we divide the two maps, we get a darker image at the center where the photons come from, which is actually what we see uh, here in these uh, uh, images. Now, the last uh, slide before I end up is how can we correlate or what is the correlation between the C plus and the star formation rate can actually use it uh, in these uh, simulations. So there are several uh, surveys here um, that uh, use different galaxy types by Herakams, by Pineda, by Sater et al. Um, and then um, 
the uh, solid black line is the closer uh, to the types of galaxies that we have by Toulouse, as I said also in the beginning of the presentation. This is the Dwarf Galaxy Survey. Uh, our results sit on top of these uh, observations here by uh, Cormier et al. 2015, 2019. And if we do a best fit with uh, uh, all the data, then we find a quite good correlation with the Deleuze um, observations. And if we apply an observational limitation, because we cannot really observe all C plus with telescopes, we observe from a limit and above, uh, then the actual red line and the black line sit on top of each other, which is a quite good uh, results that uh, our uh, simulations can reproduce the observations. And I will end up uh, with my conclusions uh, on screen. The presentation in one sentence is that uh, we conclude that C plus is a reliable tracer for measuring the star formation rates in the extragalactic context, including such systems like uh, dwarf galaxy merger. So thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, any questions? Maybe I can start. Uh, so, uh, Thomas, mm -hmm. you, you showed simulations about mergers of um, uh, galaxies, uh, dwarf galaxies. I'm just wondering uh, how sensitive are the conclusions to, to, to that? Uh, uh, setting for example if you were uh, uh, to have a dwarf galaxy just doing its own thing uh, evolving uh, coevally oh, that, that's a good question yeah because this is actually coming from an earlier paper by who i show you who who models and examines exactly this the door isolated door galaxy uh, door galaxies uh, so the conclusion is that uh, the medium is very rarefied and uh, when it comes to c plus uh, emission it is quite hard to see them in the extragalactic context with, uh, uh, with ALMA, not because ALMA uh, cannot do it, of course it, it can, it's it just the C plus emission the luminosity is, is very weak. So okay. this is below the observation limitation. So the beauty of these simulations is that if you have such um, uh, rarefied objects like these dwarf galaxies, if they merge, they can actually, uh, uh, you can actually see them uh, with um, in the extragalactic context in the high of universe. Okay, thank yeah. you. And there's a question from uh, Antonis Katsianis. Mm -hmm. So, hello, very nice Hi. talk. Uh, you. you can hear me good. Yes. Uh, in the pre last uh, uh, plot, uh, you saw uh, you presented the star formation rate versus uh, the C2 luminosity, right? Uh, it is. This one, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, so how the star formation rates are uh, computed in uh, these uh, works? Because uh, uh, as I understand, this requires modeling as well. So for example, Herrera, Campus, Pineda, Deleuze, all these people, they cannot have been using the same uh, way to get the star formation rates. No, uh, observationally speaking, of course, the star formation rate, there are different ways to uh, um, get it from the one of them as far as I know is the H alpha emission but I don't know how these people actually measured uh, the star formation rate and did this correlation at the end um, but in the simulations this is uh, an output directly from the simulation um, uh, unfortunately the technical details behind this uh, are uh, beyond my uh, limits uh, of, of knowing how the code works because it's a rather complicated Code. I don't know if Constantina can step in if she knows because she may know more than me the, uh, on that. Uh, but um, surely the star formation rates, uh, when it comes to observations, is um, within error bars, and these error bars may be big depending on the method that you do. Uh, but uh, what what we want to do is a statistical approach on that, and I think this is uh, quite. Uh, uh, reasonable to do. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I answered your question, but uh, this is yeah, what thank I, you. Thank yeah, you. okay. Vasily, you have a question as well? Yeah, this may be a mute point. Sorry, Roma, mm -hmm. I didn't catch your talk from the beginning. I just yeah. saw the last few slides due to other mm -hmm. reasons. So uh, just to understand, so do you, is 
do you conclude that C plus is a good star formation rate tracer or not? Because there are the the work that we have done with LIRGS shows the opposite, right? Because it depends on the uh, on the star formation density base, if effectively the filling factor in the PDRs. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, this what what we what we find is actually that it is um, maybe the extragalactic codings in general is quite strong word, but uh, at least in the dwarf galaxy mergers that we find, we see that this, uh, that, that they correlate well. And the reason, uh, the reason for that, I, I don't know if you have seen this slide here. Uh, these uh, these um, models um, produce the star formation rate that spans more than three orders of magnitude. And uh, we estimate then the C plus luminosity directly from the code uh, and using also the random C3D simulation without any anything to do with the star formation rate. And then we try to correlate the two. And one of the first things that we did here was to take the um, observational result from the loose and just take the equations that they find from observations, replace the star formation rate that we have from the models and see what the C plus luminosity tells. Um, and how this compares with our models. And what we find is this correlation. So the shape and the behavior is quite uh, good. So uh, these observations and models have to do with dwarf galaxies. And so for Rulix, for Ulix, it may be well that there are the other uh, reasons for that because C plus originates also from multiple phases of the ISM. This is the, mm. the, the, the problem. But uh, here we have this correlation here. Okay. So Ulix and maybe other things like cosmic rays can, yeah. can play an important yeah. role. Yeah, yeah you're you right. It's just in the 2017 paper of Dia Santos et al. Actually, if you exclude, uh, you go from lyrics to Ulix, and uh, it seems that uh, uh, there is no correlation in the sense of the star formation rate. But uh, yeah. it, may, it may work on uh, specific environments. Thank you. Yes, yes, thanks. Tanya, I, I think uh, thanks Thomas for the for the yeah, talk. Uh, I I think you see the actually behavior of Ulrich in in that same uh, plot, right? Uh, if you look at the predictions at the peak of the star formation rate around 170 mm -hmm. mega years, the difference between the prediction from uh, uh, is uh, yeah, it's an order of magnitude of right? Yes, 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 yes. So I that agree. may happen in... in uh, that's, that's, a, that, that's a good point, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Can yeah, I ask one is, more question? Which is actually this. Yeah. Yes, of course, yes. Um, so if you go back to the, the loose uh, thing that you were watching where we saw the one order uh, uh, magnitude, uh, the thing that... Uh, 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 there are a lot of calibrations in the literature. Uh, maybe some of them would reproduce better results than uh, the one order of magnitude. As I recall, the loose rela relation is a little special with respect to the relations from other people in the literature. Uh, yes. He was suggesting that the um, uh, calibration uh, for, uh, for, uh, for very extra uh, luminous uh, objects, the calibration changes. So... Yes, maybe... also... Rodrigo Herrera Camus had exactly the same uh, uh, comment. Uh, so this is uh, one of the things that we want to, to actually see before uh, we submit it, it is, is if we can actually divide these uh, different um, high star formation uh, rates, these epochs where you have high star formation rates, which are actually here. So you see that uh, when the star formation rate is high, this doesn't have this correlation, but it just goes up like that, if you see my mouse. So this uh, part can be probably better reproduced with other calibrations, uh, which is also what we want to see, yes. 